is uh, JJ. I'm the director of the American Center here, and you'll have to kind of excuse me. I'm coming off of a bad cold and uh, sounding kind of. Okay, let me just uh, um, thank our partners, Earth Day Network and Bangladesh. Not .com. Um, thank you uh, for working with uh, all the students and I guess 11 institutions and educational centers here and around Kolkata and Delhi and Jaipur during the first phase of the program. Uh, the students developed uh, a lot of interesting uh, theater productions on waste management, on water management, ener energy conservation, climate change and the importance of green cover and we uh, showcased those earlier in April and a special thank you to IC, ITC Sonar Hotel for being our green partner today. Let me ask you a question. Have you heard the word climate change? Yes. Global warming? Yes. Dumb questions, isn't it? But when I was young, nobody spoke about climate change, global warming, because in our times, the rains came when the rain should have come. We were allowed to go out and play. In fact, our mother said, please go out and get some fresh air. But today, if you go out, your lungs will get, will they get fresh air? Isn't that sad? So it's really up to you to come up and do something for yourselves. You need to ensure that this earth is green and the cities we have are clean and green. I'm with Earth Day Network, an organization that began with the first Earth Day. So thank you very much to the US State Department and to the American Center here for putting together this project. And it's been remarkable. Thank you, Bangla Nata, who did all the training for them. They are absolutely fabulous. And uh, their team went to Calcutta, to schools in Calcutta, schools in Jaipur and Delhi to build these productions, help the children build them. So that was the first stage of the proposal. The second stage of the proposal is happening in Calcutta today. We now go to our plenary session. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to invite Mr. Shiv Kumar Mohapatra of ITC Shonar. ITC Shonar for all of you is our green partner for this event. Kumar Mahapatra is the learning services manager with the ITC Shonar Green Now I invite Dr. Indrila Guha. Dr. Indrila Guha is an associate professor of economics at the Vidya Shagar College for Women. Indrila is a climate change leader under the Lead India program. We now invite uh, Ajanta De, Joint Secretary and Project Director, National Environment Wildlife Society of the News. News is committed to protect and conserve wildlife, ecology, environment, and promote alternative sustainable livelihoods for communities living in threatened ecosystems. Ajanta is a member of the Commission for Ecosystems Management. I invite Reema Banerjee, the Center for Environment Education. Environmental Education and ESD are her forte. She has researched on waste management, health, sanitation, improvement of urban living conditions. We now invite Ekta Chajma. Switch on and Onachi. Ekta is a social entrepreneur, documentary filmmaker, and an environmentalist. Our organization is a hybrid social enterprise providing clean energy solutions to underprivileged households and institutions. May I now request Mrs. Kanda Singh to please share the session. Our future generations. 
our citizens for the future. I mean, opportunities are immense whether you work with us, whether you work with anyone else. Um, to be able to bring about a change, there is lots that we're going to do. Uh, so, when we are young, I mean, we feel very blessed. We get nine houses, get good education, have good friends. And you know, sometimes we wonder that is there something like really wrong with the world? I mean, I'm really uh, it's a short film on the work that we're doing, and uh, I hope it inspires you. With the inspiration I hope it motivates you to do something. Challenge is what it is. And traditional thinking, we can get on with creating the future. Energy, a solar energy solutions company, epitomizes that thought. Energy is lighting up the homes of rural poor across East and Northeast India by providing them with renewable. And started understanding uh, what were the real problems. When you take energy into a, say, a village or even a town, small town, wherever, which does not have access to reliable energy, the opportunities that energy can create, that's incredible. Because if you're able to take light into a household, then number of hours of working can increase, which can dramatically impact the livelihood of that household. Uh, uh, you know, uh, person that we are sitting here, each uh, each person has a role to play. I think corporates also have a larger role to play, making sure that uh, they give back what they take from the earth. Leadership program, and then how I took it forward with the help of the Global Change Program, Jadavpur University, where we actually experience uh, different kind of environmental degradation and then we take up the mitigation and adaptation strategies and we uh, like to involve youth per se for the college students as well as the school students in order to really take up the leadership program forward. In that case, um, next. First, I would like to uh, mention that why the youth program is so important in today's life. You can see it's just a very simple data showing the global youth population between uh, age 15 and 24 is 18%. In Asia Pacific, it is 650 million, that is 60% of world's youth population, which is quite a big number. And if you talk about India, it is 40% are youth. We talk about uh, the demographic dividend where we talk about how youth are going to give back to the society and where you have the role to play, you have the stake. Uh, practically when we uh, come to a world like climate change, global warming, we sometimes feel confused and perplexed as to the uh, huge magnanimity and the gigantic of the crisis and the problem as to, as an individual, what can we really do to combat climate change? But uh, you see, um, if we understand the problem and there is always something to be done at individual levels uh, because uh, the whatever the magnanimity, whatever the huge diversity of the crisis, it comes down to the micro level. We worked and uh, pointed out five major points where exactly students can work. And I'll just share these five points with you. I just point you know, uh, the report is uh, under publication, but uh, I will just uh, put five points that you can find the interventions in and we can help you in. First thing is, the major issue is unsustainable lifestyle. Do you understand that? Second thing, very important thing that we are talking about and everybody, you know, pointed towards that is waste management. I will talk about something which uh, Arinda Adi also talked about. In one of our projects called Urja Chetna project, ma'am, we are having a close-end waste management with the school students. We are having composting as well as paper recycling right from the segregation to the end of the composting process in the school. Actions have taken and we got very good response. And they've taken actions which are simple but important, like some of them have said, how they have stopped on the road and asked people not to throw plastic or not to litter and things like that. So we'll give award for the best essay. We also did two contests, Sing Green and Imagine Green. Sing Green for, was for a jingle for the campaign and Imagine Green was for a logo. You can see the logos there. So I'll now request their journey to announce the winners and we request each of you to raise for right
writing a beautiful essay on the action that you know we can take to make our city more sustainable. And the award goes to Preetha Chakraborty from New Horizon High School. I'll just read part from our essay. And by that time, I would like to request Mr. Damon Williams, Councillor Officer of the American Center, Kolkata, to please come. That the city governors should come up over, they should encourage building of Because youth has fresh ideas, 
Youth has new thoughts. Youth has, youth has so many theories that is helping them to reach out to a new destination. I'd like to invite uh, Shohini Timbadia from Sushila Birla Girls School to be speaking against the motion. I believe that this, this is a very debatable topic because some people might suggest that the youth, they don't have enough resources or they don't have the experience as has been said by my fellow opponents. But um, we, we know, we all are youngsters here and we really, we know that the youth is energetic. We are enthusiastic about new ideas. We are very innovative. I'd like to move on to the next uh, team. Vinayak Kamal Ghosh from Delhi Public School, Ruby Park will be speaking for the motion. The world in which we live has a total of about 8 billion people out of which 2.4 billion are the youth. From the moment they wake up, the youth are glued to their technological devices such as iPods, smartphones, televisions, laptops. Now if we can calculate the carbon footprint of each young individual and multiply it by the 2.4 billion, then we may get a brief idea about how much the youth actually contribute to climate change and global warming. Speaker for the motion is Astha Agarwal from Sri Shikshayatan School. A very good evening to one and all present here. Today I, Astha Agarwal, representing Sri Shikshayatan School, am here to speak in favour of the motion which says that the role of youth is marginal in combating climate change. But before I begin, I would like to ask a question to all of you. Say suppose, if I go to any governmental organization and I say that sir, since my city is subjected to repeated floods almost every year, so I would like to render help from your organization. Now my worthy audience, I would like to ask from you all, what shall be the response of that government authority? Do you re really believe that the government authority will welcome my question, will respect my question and will extend helping hands? No. If you are pragmatic, you would rather say that the government authorities will either laugh at me or maybe they will show me the way to a mental asylum stating that something might be wrong with me somewhere because ageism is something that has always played and is still playing an important role in our society. Well, we were able to come to a decision. Uh, again, it's very tough, but uh, third place, we chose us.
actually be expressed not by me, but by a quote that I often thought was very, uh, went directly to the heart of the matter. The, the role of youth is not always in what they can directly do, but to put it in the way that Christina Figueres, who is the executive president of the UNFCC did, she said that it is youth, you are the agents of transformational change in your families, organizations, schools, universities and workplaces. You can reach out to your peers, your elders and all current decision makers. You can inspire change. You can inspire by action and lead by example. Now this was a very eventful day for me, very educational and uh, a lot of people said a lot of things about the role of youth in combating climate change but ultimately I as a person was convinced by the people who spoke for the motion because um, ultimately the youth, yes the youth does have a lot of resources, the youth has a lot of mind and everything, a lot of creativity but ultimately the youth doesn't have the power to implement all those ideas, maybe one or two people are exceptions, maybe one or two people can do a lot of things. There are examples of that but as a whole as a unit the youth needs the help of the elderly people as well. So I would say I would vote for the motion.